Welcome everyone to today's presentation on hit and miss war design presented on behalf of the Concrete Masonry Association of Australia. So just some background information before we begin this presentation. Relevant standards such as AS3700 have been used to calculate the capacity of hit and miss brick walls. Some slight modifications have been made to these equations and we will go through these later on in this presentation. We'll also look at some common failure mechanisms in hit and miss brick walls, such as depth and line failures. We will also look at some of the research that the University of Newcastle did with regards to preliminary flexural testing of hit and miss walls. Hit and miss brick walls currently fall outside the scope of AS3700. This is because the masonry provision stated in AS3700 accounts for all of their perpend joints completely filled. Hit and miss brick walls don't have any vertical perpend joints, and thus modifications must be made to the calculation process stated in AS3700. Here we have a hit and miss brick wall on the left and a stretcher bonded wall on the right. As you can see, there are a couple of differences between the two walling systems. Firstly, there are no vertical perpend joints in the hit and miss brick wall, while in stretcher bonded wall, the vertical joints are completely filled. Secondly, there is a void between the horizontal mortar joints in the hit and miss brick wall, while in the stretcher bonded wall, the horizontal mortar joints are completely filled. As a result, modifications must be made to the calculations stated in AS3700. It is common practice to design hit and miss walls as non-load bearing. However, they still must provide enough stability for other small loads, such as wind loads. They must be supported on at least three sides. Both stepped and line failure need to be considered for both small and larger overlaps. Allowable unit overlap will be affected by parameters which also affect the wall slenderness and bond strength. The section modulus of the resulting bedded area will account for the effect that the amount of unit overlap will have on the resulting bending capacity. In order to provide additional strength, designers divide the desired wall area into smaller sections and then support each section at horizontal and vertical interfaces using bond beams or engaged piers. The University of Newcastle conducted testing on hit and miss wall systems to determine how well AS3700 predicts the wall's behaviour. The results were inconclusive, however, they do indicate good engineering judgement because the clauses for bending can be modified to accommodate and predict the capacity of hit and miss walls. Here's a test setup done by the University of Newcastle. Figure A shows the schematic elevation of the test setup. A steel angle airbag surrounds the frame while an airbag is placed in front of the brick wall. A plywood reaction board is placed in front of the airbag to determine the displacement of the brick wall under load. Figures B and figure C represent vertical bending and horizontal bending respectively. In the next few slides, we'll be going through an example that runs through the calculation of horizontal bending capacity and shear capacity of hidden and miss walls. There are two failure types when it comes to hidden and miss walls, stepped failure and line failure. Equations 1 and 2 represent stepped failure, while equation 3 represents line failure. The factors that affect the horizontal bending capacity include phi, which is a capacity reduction factor, this is taken as 0.6 for bending, kp, which is the perpend spacing factor, this is taken as less than 1 for hidden miss walls, fmt, which is a characteristic flexural tensile strength of the masonry, this is taken as 0.2 MPA, zd, which is the section modulus of the bedded area. This is calculated. FD, which is the compressive stress on the bed joints. This is assumed to be zero to be conservative. FUT, which is the lateral modulus of rupture. This is taken as 0.8 MPA due to the absence of test data. ZU, which is the section modulus of the units. This is calculated. And finally, ZP, which is the section modulus of the perpens. Since there are no perpen joints in hidden miss walls, this can be taken as zero. While the perpend spacing factor Kp is commonly taken as 0.6 for hidden miss walls, Kp must be calculated with respect to the problem at hand. Thus, Kp is taken as the least of the unit overlap over the thickness of the unit, or unit overlap over the height of the unit, or one. For example, a wall with units overlap of 70 mil, 110 mil thick, and 76 mil high Kp is calculated to be 0.64. Next, the section modulus of the bedded area, Zd, is calculated. 
This is calculated by multiplying B, the length of the wall, by the thickness of the wall squared over six. It is important to proportion this to the hiddenness wall. Next, the section modulus of the bedded area ZD is calculated. This is calculated by multiplying B, the length of the wall, by the thickness of the wall squared over six. It is important to proportion this. Next, we calculate the amount of field bed joints for the hidden miss wall over one meter length. This is calculated to be 460 millimeters at each course. Next, we calculate the bedding ratio between the hidden miss wall and the solid wall. This is calculated to be 0.46. Next, we calculate section modulus for the hidden miss wall. This is calculated by multiplying the section modulus of the bedded area for the solid wall by the bedding ratio. This is calculated to be 9.28 times 10 to the 5 millimeter cubes per meter run. Next, we calculate the horizontal bending capacity for the hidden miss brick wall to be taken as the minimum of the three equations as stated in the previous slides. It was calculated that the first equation, which represents depth failure, to have the lowest value of 0.319 kilonewton meters. The shear capacity for masonry walls is calculated by combining shear bond and shear friction, which includes self-weight and any dead load. The factors affecting the outer plane shear capacity for a horizontal plane include phi, which is the capacity reduction factor. This is taken as 0.6 for unreinforced masonry shear. FMS, which is the characteristic shear strength of the masonry. This is taken as 0.25 megapascals for horizontal shear. AD, which is the design cross-sectional area. This is adjusted for gaps in the bed joint. KV, which is the shear factor. This is taken as 0.3 from water bed joints. And finally, FD, which is the compressive stress on the bed joints. This is assumed to be zero to be conservative as there are no bed joints at the void. Firstly, we calculate the area of bed joint for a one meter hidden miss wall. This is calculated by multiplying the wall length by the brick width by the bedding ratio which comes out to 50,600 millimeters squared per meter. Next, we calculate the shear capacity. As you can see, shear bond is the only contributor to the shear capacity. Shear friction is calculated to be zero, as there is no compressive stress on the bed joint at the void. Thus, the shear capacity is calculated to be 7.59 kilonewtons per meter. The association has curated a hidden miss brick wall fact sheet that can be found on our website. It contains a lot of useful information regarding the design and construction of hidden miss brick screens, and I highly urge you guys to check it out. If you guys have any other questions regarding hidden miss design, or just brick design in general, please don't hesitate to contact the association, and we'll be more than happy to help you guys out. The association also has a wide range of free resources that can be found on our website, such as technical manuals, research papers, and case studies regarding the design and construction of brick and block. The association also offers a technical hotline where we can answer your technical inquiries regarding the design and construction of brick and block structures. Should you have any questions, please feel free to call us on the number shown. This concludes today's presentation on hidden miss wall design. Thank you for your time, and we hope you enjoyed today's presentation.